Yeah, you're right, and, and kind of a similar response here. I, I still can't figure out, McGraw, uh, how one community responds to something like this so differently from another community, but they're, they're sort of following the same pattern that happened there in Ferguson uh, 2004, to, wow, two years ago. Right. Um, they, yeah, demonstrations last night that turned violent uh, deep into the night. Uh, one person was gravely injured, a protester who, according to police, was shot by another protester, not by the police. And, and in fact, initially, that person was reported as, as having died. Uh, we believe this morning that he's still on life support, but uh, sort of a, a reflection of the violence that happens in demonstrations like this occasionally, McGraw. Take us back to what sparked this. What happened between the police and this Keith Scott? Yes, uh, police were serving a warrant at an apartment complex on someone else. A plainclothes police officer apparently uh, saw this man step out of a vehicle, according to the police, with a gun. Got back into the vehicle. Uh, there, there were uh, uh, you know, other officers called out to the scene. He stepped out of the vehicle again, still holding the gun, according to the investigators. And that's when he was shot to death. Police feeling threatened by that. Uh, the family of Keith Lamont Scott says that he was holding not a gun, but a book. They said that he, every afternoon, sat in his car reading a book, waiting for his son to come home from school. And so those are sort of the conflicting sides of this story this morning. The police say there is dash cam video. It may back up their claim or refute their claim that uh, this man was holding a gun when he stepped out of that car. So you're saying at, at this point there, it's still not conclusive if he was carrying a gun or just carrying a book? Well, it's still a matter of uh, who, who's being asked. His family members and, and attorneys for the family say that it was a, a book, not a gun. The police say definitively it was a gun, that they didn't even find a book there on the scene when they uh, conducted their investigation after the shooting. So it's still very much up in the air. And, uh, you know, in, in 2016, people aren't satisfied unless they see video, and, right. and that video may in fact exist. We'll have to see how quickly they are. Uh, how quickly uh, they release that. Yeah, I don't even think video changes people's minds mm -hmm. th anymore these days. You're right, you're uh, right. Uh, what about the uh, um, the uh, loss of property last night? I did see that they the police did use tear gas last night. How how bad was the property damage last night? There was, there was some uh, looting that happened in the downtown area. A lot of broken glass on businesses and storefronts, some spray-painted uh, uh, yeah, profanities in, in other places. But the mayor this morning with Charlotte says that that uh, her community is open for business that uh, and and you saw this in ferguson as well you know uh, uh west florissant was open every morning businesses opened up their restaurants and come nightfall that's when uh, the problem began and and you know they're, they're anticipating that perhaps that might happen here again that's why the governor has issued a state of declar a, a, uh, declared a state of emergency to get the North Carolina National Guard on site. They're expected to start arriving here this afternoon, McGraw. Yeah. Uh, are we expecting more protests tonight and for the next couple of days, or do we even know? Probably. You know, the, the demonstrations are one thing, but the kind of mayhem that we saw last night, I think that's what the, the police are trying to avoid, the police, the, the mayor, and the governor. Yeah. Uh, Jim Ryan with the latest from Charlotte, North Carolina. Jim.